So guys, today we're going to see how we can um, write fail safe scrapers, web scrapers fail a lot. Uh, how do you build in a monitoring system into them? Uh, because of all the things that you cannot control that happens on the internet and during crawling and scraping and saving data, uh, how do you build something which is stable? We just saw how in an earlier video, um, I'll link that video to it if you haven't seen it, which is uh, we learned how to scrape Airbnb using a code like this. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to repeat it here. Please go ahead and see that. And now on top of that, we, uh, we built, uh, this is not enough because this doesn't sort of solve the problem uh, at production level, right? Because it keeps breaking. For example, uh, the URL might not be found. Then you have uh, URL timing out, your internet going down, Airbnb blocking you, your user agent strings don't work. Um, the, 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 the Airbnb has changed its pattern, so it's no longer working item prop equals item list element doesn't work. Even if this works, this works, sort of this odd order is changed, so zero and one don't quite work here. Um, then what are you going to do? How are you going to monitor all this? Get an alert system going so that you can fix it as fast as possible. First of all, how do you even know when you're doing hundreds of these things and every single day running on a cross job or something like that? How are you even going to find out? Right. So here is an example script. I'm not going to write it in front of you now. Uh, just take this script and work on it and improve on it. And I'm just going to explain this to you. That's the same thing I put a monitor part to it. So it's hardly any amount of code, the actual scraping, but we're going to put in a monitor function. A monitor function takes an event type that's happened and then your email that you can shoot out to. In my case, it will shoot to Mohan at proxies and it connects to SMTP or Gmail and then shoots the content out, okay? It uses the SMTP library and date time to send out the time at which this event happened and sys to do all sorts of things like exit and all that in, in case there is a catastrophe, uh, <laughs> catastrophic error, okay? So here's what the function does. You pass anything to this function with your email and it'll send it to you the email, okay? Change it around a little bit here to see um, who the from sender is and all that. And then of course, change your own password here and put that up for SMTP. This is, uh, mine is hosted on Gmail, so it's easy for me to just use that and send it. It also creates a log file here. So let's go through what happens. This code saves the errors to a log file. It also sends an email alerting the developers of a failure point. It can write code that logs this to a server uh, it, it, to a database as well, actually, that's what I meant. Um, so you can just put it into MySQL and uh, make merry, right? So you have permanent record of everything. But here, the two things that happen here is it writes to monitor.txt, it appends to it, and appends the date from the date string. And then what type of error is this, which is event type. And therefore, that's it. And then an email is also short with the same thing. What is the event? What happened? Okay. But if there is an error count more than three, this is the threshold. You can set it to three or two or eight or whatever. That means there's just too many things going on in this for it to continue. Just abort this. There's no point running it. So that's why we do sys.exit. Write it into a file as well. Maybe even send another email and then just abort. Till then it doesn't sort of abort. It keeps going but keeps a count on every script as to how many times the error has been triggered, right? So first of all, let's try and prevent, uh, get all the errors. For example, even in the, even in the, um, even in a place where you actually fetch the data, which is a requested get, it might fail because of timeout, right? Then you just call the monitor with the Airbnb timed out function uh, as a parameter and then whatever is your email address here. Right, and if there is, for example, too many redirects on Airbnb, uh, Airbnb doesn't do that, but in a lot of it, it's a common problem. Then you can also again send out an email and you know, catch that. Uh, a general, a complete exception where nothing happens, it doesn't request, it doesn't you know, give you any data at all. Then you can even exit it here. 
right as well as first of all storing it in the log okay so again i'm running a few functions just to trigger this it will create a file um you know these are all the things that you can test okay i'll leave this code here so that you can test it but uh, this is just fake triggering okay so i'm going to disable it now disable that okay so for a, and and then there is a test which says that okay all these it passed through there is content that's coming in but sometimes the content is so little because airbnb issues may be a capture challenge or it just blocks you and then displays a blocking page which typically is a much smaller page than uh, the entire airbnb html right there you can put a trigger for that anything less than 200 bytes you're going to say airbnb returned unusual return it looks pretty odd to me right maybe two maybe a thousand bytes is probably even more appropriate and then uh, put that put that put that thing there and uh, in fact you can you can you can trigger it at different levels you can just say hey you know um sponsored content is less than that if it is less than 200 probably even more catastrophic something is going on have a look at this so the email will get shot and uh, um, and also the error log is triggered all right so inside of that for example if the pattern changes here so for example this item list element or whatever it will be changes the html pattern you're checking for that and then so separately check it see the length of that result if it is less than that means the array if it's less than at least one result should be there right if it's less than that there's something is changed and can't fetch anything send send an email okay that means the developer can come and have a look at the code itself and change something inside of that the same thing can be applied here for example if you are not able to get the price then there's something really really wrong you know please get the price right and uh, you can trigger another alert here you can use this sort of basic infrastructure to trigger all sorts of alerts you can send an sms alert if you have an sms gateway access you can send a, send a slack alert if you want to ex extend it however you want uh, i'll put a link to the code for this and download it mm, and this is how you build reliable scrapers right um, also change the user agent rotate it also make sure that you rotate user proxy server come on use a proxy server uh, and a rotating proxy server at that so i have one which is called proxysapi.com go there sign up get the api key and pass everything to me i'll give you a thousand api calls free all i need is your email to register so i can give you the api key don't need your credit card use it for free for life okay and if you really like it um subscribe to the pro version Otherwise, this will route you through a million, a couple of million residential, private, super high speed proxies. Automatically retries, retries your uh, request till it gets it, so it doesn't matter. Um, and automatically changes browser identities. Again, it doesn't matter, we'll get you the results. Captures JavaScript rendering even for hard to reach, you know, uh, rendering pages like uh, with lots of Ajax. We can get that content as well. Um, everything is possible that's how you build something so you integrate all of that into something like this then it becomes a robot scraper so here we go thank you very much